Uh, we are live coming to you from Bonnie Dune with no home electrical service, uh, whatever the heck that means. I have no electricity. I had to drive down the road and uh, we're, we're making it work with my cell phone and Zoom. Guys, when there's a will, there's a way. And uh, Spencer and I just had to talk today. We've been putting this off for a week. So I wanted to connect with him about several things. Thank you for joining the show, Spencer. Thanks for having me, Josh. Returning guests multiple times. Um, okay, so, so there's a few things we, we want to talk about. Why don't you just give a short introduction of who you are for the people who haven't seen your other po uh, episodes with me. And, and then we'll move into all these cool, amazing things that we're going to talk about today. Sure, Josh. Uh, yeah. So I'm an inventor and uh, I invent things for myself and because I want to be healthier. So I invent products. And uh, what happened over 30 years is people would say, hey, can I get one of those things? And so I ended up becoming a manufacturer. And most recent thing is about a year ago, uh, I started getting back into grounding or earthing. And for those who don't know what that is, it's uh, either walking barefoot on the ground or having some kind of pad that is attached by a wire to the ground that you can sleep on or rest on, uh, put your feet on while you're working at your desk. And when I read about this stuff, people were getting really amazing results about being in touch with the earth and the science was, was pretty sound. Basically, the earth is a huge source of electrons and we evolved or designed to uh, be in contact with it and receive those electrons. And when we don't, there's problems. And so I started grounding and, you know, the results were kind of subtle, you know, and uh, I said, well, I like this and it's interesting, but why aren't I getting the results that other people are getting or what I think I should get? So I started doing a little research into it. And uh, so basically, um, Electrons come off the solar wind, they, they come off the sun on the solar wind, they hit the earth, the ionosphere, and they get into the earth. And then we receive the electrons. Uh, we receive it by breathing in air that has uh, electrons or a negative charge is another way of saying that. Uh, we eat food that has electrons, we drink water that has electrons. And if we're still, you know, or for the last however many years humans have been on the planet up until we got rubber soled shoes, and synthetic carpets, we'd also receive them through our skin. Now, <clears throat> what happens is uh, the, the ways in which we're supposed to get these electrons through the air, water, food, skin, these are all operating in reverse now, and I'll explain it. Uh, the air used to be 20% more negative than positive. And so every breath in would you know, charge up your lungs with electrons, but we're now 20% more positive than, elect uh, than negative. That's because all the negative electrons in the air are being used up to clean pollution out of the air. So since it's cleaning pollution out of the air, it can't clean pollution out of us. And since there's more pollution than electrons, the air ends up being positively charged. So with every breath, we're losing electrons. So that's the air going backwards. The water, uh, water is flocculated, meaning they put in a positive charge into the water so that because a lot of water is recycled sewage and as part of the purification process they they want to make everything stick together so that they can filter it so they put a positive charge in the water so now rather than drinking fresh mountain stream water full of electrons because it's been moving and percolating uh, it's positively charged so we're losing water we're losing electrons through the water we drink uh, the food we eat now, if you look at a living, healthy cell, it's got a lot of charge to it. But when you cook it, now I'm not against cooked food, but when you cook food, in addition to killing the parasites and bacteria uh, and making it more digestible, you also knock all the electrons off. So now we're eating electron deficient food. Uh, so, and then finally, so we don't get it through the water, the air, or the food, and then, well, what about through the earth itself and touching the earth? Well, we don't. You know, we wear rubber soled shoes and we sleep, you know, uh, on carpets raised off the earth. Now, there's something uh, called the tribal electric series, and it states that any two materials you rub together, one will typically steal electrons from the other. So, uh, human skin will give up electrons to almost anything it touches. 
it's that's where it is on in, 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 in the series in the tribal electric series. Now you might say, well, why are we designed in such a way that everything we touch pulls electrons off us? Well, uh, another way of saying that is we're we're in a flow state. Our body is meant to flow with electrons. That's what meridians are. They they transfer the electrons from the earth up our feet, and then it's an irrigation system to the organs for electrons. So. In a, in a natural environment, the fact that we would give up electrons also means you know, that they're flowing very easily and you're barefoot, it's no big deal. But the environment we live in, you know, the clothes we wear have synthetics. So every time we walk, our skin is moving against synthetic clothes. We're losing electrons into the clothes, the carpets we walk on, the shoes we wear, everything we touch. And this includes electronics. I took a, an ion meter, an electron meter, and I went around to things like you know, cell phone and keyboards and stuff that I would be near, they were all pulling electrons off me. Any, uh, there's a, a correlation between people that live under the high power lines and uh, cancer. And they're saying, hey, you know, this can't be the, uh, can't do anything because um, you know, the studies they did, but what they weren't realizing is when electricity moves through a wire, it creates like this vacuum effect and it pulls electrons with it. So what was really getting the people sick from living under those electrical tension wires was the fact that it was sucking electrons out. Now, cows can be under these, uh, these high tension wires and not have problems because they're in touch with the ground. So even though electrons are being pulled out, they're sucking them up at the same speed. But if you're underneath one of these towers wearing rubber soled shoes, so you can't get the electrons from the earth, it just pulls everything out. So I noticed that even the, healthy electrical equipment I had, you know, the, the devices uh, that are there in the health industry, like the multi-wave oscillators and the violet rays and all these things that were good for me in some way, they were also stripping me of electrons. So I'm thinking, wow, uh, everything in, the, in, the, in my environment is pulling electrons out of me. I like the idea of grounding, but I'm not feeling anything. And so, you know, I sat down and I was trying to figure out, well, the science is good, why doesn't grounding feel more powerful than, than it does? And I was, um, I live off grid. So I have a, a whole solar powered system and it goes into batteries. And one of the things you learn about batteries is uh, you don't want the charge to get too low. You don't want to cycle it from hundred to zero. It'll destroy the battery because as the battery gets lower in power, it crystallizes, it sulfates. And once those crystals get in there, it lowers the ability of the battery to take a charge. Now, what I did is on my own battery system, I put on this voltage spike system that would send voltage spikes into the battery and it would blow up their crystals and now my batteries work great. Now I was thinking about the human body and I was thinking, well, what does it mean if I run out of electrons? Well, uh, one of the things is positive and negative attract, right? Okay, positive and negative okay, attract. Yeah. Okay, good. And uh, if I am, uh, I'm, I'm meant to be negatively charged, but if I start becoming partially positively charged and the rest of me is negative, I'm gonna to start to stick to myself internally. It's like running out of electrons is like drinking Elmer's glue. It, everything starts to clog up and stick together. And when that happens at a, at a long enough period, it, it forms crystals. So the crystals we have in our body, the, you know, the kidney stones, all these stones that accumulate, right? The, the brain sand, the breast calcifications, this is just an advanced form of glue, which is not enough electrons. So I'm thinking about all this and I'm like, well, what happens if I build something that can charge me back up, like grounding on steroids? But then I realized it wouldn't do as much if I couldn't hold the charge. I'm like, the, I've got 37 trillion cells, right? And like, like a car battery, I've let my charge go down so low that even if I walk barefoot, I can't pull it out of the earth anymore, right? So going, that's the reason grounding doesn't work for a lot of people. It's because their cell batteries are, have been so low for so long, they, they're dead batteries, they can't hold a charge. So we have to put the voltage spikes in and that works by a process called um, the piezoelectric effect. Now, if you used to have, people used to have quartz watches, right? There's a tiny little crystal quartz. And what happens is if you give it an electrical charge, it vibrates. And then that gives the, the clock for the, the timing for the, the thing to move. 
Well, if you can put enough electricity into a crystal, you can actually not just make it resonate, you can make it blow up. Well, that's how the voltage spikes are working. You send a voltage spike, this high, high shot of electrons, the crystal starts to vibrate and blows up. So my goal was to, to decrystallize the human body, the human battery, like I could do for my batteries in my home or your cell phone so that I could hold a charge again. So um, the first thing that I did is I made this machine and I guess I could show it to you over here. There it is. And, can, we see, uh, can we see it again? Like a little, little more Yeah, time? here we yeah. go. It's, uh, that's right there. Nice. So, you know, it's not very heavy. It's not very large. It's not, and um, the, um, it's got a little paper plate in front of it because we haven't had the actual uh, graphics done. So if you're like, wait, that, that looks like paper. It is. Yeah. Uh, graphics haven't been printed on the plastic yet. It's just the demo to show it to you. So uh, I made this unit and I made it pulse. And I put it on. And uh, the first thing that happened is the next morning, I, I, my urine was very different. It was like really cloudy. And I have a microscope and a centrifuge. So, you know, it's, uh, I'm able to look at stuff. And it was completely chock full of crystals. So it had knocked all these crystals out of me, a tremendous number. It was, it was, it was amazing. Um, and so that was the first thing. I'm like, okay, let me do this until... And let me pulse this on until my urine no longer shows that I'm dumping crystals. And um, so that was the first thing I did. And, you know, it's not just me. It's like, you know, anybody who's not, who's spent, the, the moment someone spends a couple of years wearing shoes, that's it. You know, every year a person's wearing shoes is that much less time that they're, they're getting charged. And so the crystals are forming in everybody and then they just don't, they can't take a charge. So like, um, the grounding is like a trickle charge for a battery, right? If your battery is healthy, meaning there's no crystals in it, a trickle charge is great. So if your body is free of crystals, then if you go and take a 15 minute walk barefoot, like the ancient Taoists would say in the morning or in the dew, you'll charge up. But they weren't in a situation we're in. We're in a situation where yeah, going to a waterfall or a beach or walking barefoot feels great, but the effect doesn't last because we can't hold the charge that nature wants to give us. So, you know, that was the first thing that happened. And um, so the next day, here's what I noticed. The next day, there's all these crystals coming out. And that was pretty cool. Um, now, I had, um, for about, God knows how many years, 15 years of EC, I had peripheral artery disease and um, uh, uh, peripheral neuropathy. I um, had eaten a high fruit diet as a kid because uh, you know, I was going through my vegan vegetarian thing and uh, ended up getting sugar way too high and um, damaging, you know, high sugar damages the, uh, the nerves in the arteries. And so after that, you know, about 10 years after that, I ended up with peripheral neuropathy, which is your your feet tingle and they'd fall asleep and they'd be cold all the time. And uh, I had gotten used to the fact that I needed to wear heavy wool socks to bed every night, even in summertime. And anyway, after I've been using this all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, my feet are getting hot and I'm like, like they're sweating. They're so hot. And so I didn't, that was it. I, it knocked all the, all that adhesive junk out of the fine microcapillary circulation and blood was getting to my feet again. Now, I mean, you know, you think circulation, uh, you think arteries and veins, but 85% of the circulation is your capillaries. And they're really, really fine. They can be like half the size of blood cell. Blood cells have to like uh, fold in half to get through them. So it doesn't take much adhesive. It doesn't take much glue, you know, uh, much of a positive charge to lock those down. So when I opened them all up, all the blood got to my feet. My feet were warm and they weren't tingling and I didn't need socks. And, you know, the, your brain doesn't have nerve endings in it. So, you know, it, I wouldn't, you don't feel the lack of blood flow to your brain. Like you feel it in your feet, but what you get is, you know, your mind's not as sharp. You may be a little depressed or a little anxious or however your the brain tends to go. So, you know, it's not, yeah, I noticed it in my feet, but I knew it was happening everywhere. It was happening in the microcirculation of all my internal organs were getting cleaned out of those crystals. So that was cool. Um, the next thing that happened is I had had this tiny little, I'm not going to call it a tumor, 
but you know, there's a whole range of growths that are in between normal and cancer, right? They haven't, they're not cancerous, they could become under the right conditions. So I had one of those things on my nose, so as long as I can remember. About a, a week into it, or two weeks into it, it dries up and falls out. Like, I didn't remember that that was where that little growth was, so I'm looking in the mirror, I'm like, what's this little dry spot? And then eventually it just pull, falls out, there's a tiny little hole in my nose that eventually you know, heals up. And then I realized, holy, that was the growth. So I'm like, well, what did the electrons do to make this thing fall out of me? And so if you look at the work of, of Dr. Tennant and some others, you'll see that voltage is the main controller for um, cell replication and, and some other things. So for instance, if you uh, take a healthy cell and lower its voltage, it can become cancerous. On the other hand, if you take a cancerous cell and raise its voltage, then it'll stop dividing. So I think that the thing that fell out was a result of my voltage going up. Uh, they, they did a study with rats where they put them in a cage with a, with a low roof made up of carpet so that every time the rat walked, it would rub its back against the carpet. And what that did is it pulled all the electrons off the rat and they used rats that had tumors. And what they found is the tumors in the rats that were walking or forced to move under this carpet grew 30% faster than normal. Wow. So we know that lack of electron rapidly accelerates a tumor growth, right? Well, I called the guys who, you know, I tracked down the people, the scientists that did the study. And I said, that's really amazing that lack of electrons will accelerate tumors. Does a presence of electrons slow them down? He goes, well, we'd love to do it, but we don't have the money for that study but it would be a great study to do, right? Um, so, okay, the crystals came out, my circulation improved, this little growth fell off my nose. Um, that's, that's what happened for me. Uh, some, and then I got some units out to some other people. And there's this one woman who is stage four cancer uh, and she's using it and uh, a week into it, she starts sending me pictures of what's coming out of her into the toilet. And she tells me that she's getting cups of worms out of her. And normally worms are too small to see, they're microscopic. That's the majority of parasites people get. But sometimes you get things that are, you know, visible to the human eye. And she sent me pictures of things. And, she, and, and they came out and they, they were actually, some of them were alive. Like she would pull it out with like a, you know, a chopstick or something that would wrap itself around the chopstick. Yeah, I mean, you know, and this, that, was, that, was, that was kind of freaky. Uh, and you know, she was a good sport about it because she was in the health field and she understood the correlation between uh, parasites and cancer. So she was thrilled to have these things come out of her. Uh, and so now I'm thinking, all right, well, why would that happen? And so I type into the internet, you know, worms, parasites, and electricity. And what comes out are, <clears throat> um, you know, country folk who want to go fishing. And so they take their car battery and they run some probes into the ground by a riverbank and the electricity drives the worms out and they grab the worms and they fish. So I'm like, oh, worms hate electricity. That's why this woman was purging so many worms. So um, now someone will say, well, gosh, I don't, I don't want them coming out of me alive. Well, actually you do. Because, yeah. yeah, because what happens is if you take something, let's say someone takes some herbal mix that kills parasites, that's great. But now there's a, you know, a million dead parasites in the body that the body has to either encase or get out. And in the case of liver flukes, and this woman sent pictures of a few liver flukes, that came, and they, were like, they were like this big coming out of her. Like, like they look like pale, white. Like filet mignon, I've had them come out. <laughs> yeah, the, the, these look like pale, greasy leaves. They were disgusting. Yeah. Um, and um, so if that were to die inside of her, it would never leave. The idea is to make it want to leave. And part of the reason I think it works is, aside from the fact that worms don't like electricity, is worms are attracted to a lack of electricity, right? So the worms and the, and the bacteria and the yeast and all these infections we deal with, most of them are composters, right? Yeah, there's, there's influenza and Ebola, but most things are composting. The, and so why are they composting us? Well, they, they think we're dead and they're like, okay, it's time to turn you back to soil. How do they know if we're dead? Well, if you look at a living cell versus a dead cell, one of the big differences is the living cell has an electrical charge. 
So I think worms are attracted to a lack of electrical charge. It's how they say, ah, that's food. The less charge, the more dead, the better eating. And when it's a lot of charge, it's like, what am I doing here? So when you charge the body, you know, the body which has been negatively charged and is attracting all these infections suddenly starts, they leave of their own volition. You don't have to fight them. They want to go right? The virus is like, I don't need to be here. The bacteria is, this is not for me. The yeast and the fungus is, this is not dead. Let me move on because I, I want to go to where I can eat properly. So I think that was what was going on with uh, the, uh, the whole um, worm thing. Let me pause you for a second. I'm going to mute myself because of the uh, background sure. noise because it's the way this records is it's going to record only your screen. Mm -hmm. So, and then I may occasionally put my phone down just to rest my, okay. uh, my hand here. So you yeah. just keep going. I'm fully present okay. with you. Okay. We're almost done. Yeah. I'm fully present. We don't have. Okay. To so when I'm done, when I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about 5g and a few other things and then I'll, I'll just open it up to you. Okay. So I'm ready. Sure. Okay. So, uh, there's a, a few other things as I've been playing around with it. Uh, one is uh, antioxidants. Uh, antioxidant, uh, electrons are actually the best antioxidant you can get because they're the tiniest thing. They're, they, they're, they're dimensionless, they're, they're infinitely small. So uh, that's the world's greatest antioxidant. But electrons are also how uh, antioxidants recycle. So, you know, sure, we can buy all of these antioxidants, but if we don't have enough electrons, they get used once and that's it. But if we have a source of electrons, then the antioxidants can recycle and get used a billion times a second. Uh, the other thing I thought was, all right, I'm now, so the way the machine works is you put it on the ground and you, there's a little metal pad, you put your feet on it and the electrons get sucked up into the body and into the meridians. Uh, but there's a few other ways you can use it. Um, I make this uh, special tube where you can electrify it and breathe it in. So that's dealing with the air. Uh, you can also make what I call an electro, uh, an electronic or electro, an electron smoothie. Now there's a, there was a fad for a while of people making liposome vitamin C. And they would, you could do that in your blender. A liposome is basically a very tiny sphere that you can pack with something that survives digestion, hits the liver, or the liver has the enzymes to break it open and then out it comes. So I made electronic liposomes. So what you can do with a machine is there is a setting where you attach it to a blender and you put in some water and some lecithin and you blend it and the blades of the blender become electrified. And as the water becomes electrified, it gets encapsulated inside the liposomes. So then you drink it down and then it opens up inside your body and you get this blast of electrons into your liver. So um, the ways in which you could get electrons normally through your feet, through the air, through eating and drinking, uh, you can replicate that with the device. And there's one other thing that I want to talk about. Uh, one thing that bothers me is this whole 5G thing. Now, I live you know, on 100 acres surrounded by national forests, so I don't have that. But you know, a, a lot of people don't have that, um, that advantage, and they're being exposed to 5G all the time. There is something in physics called the Compton um, Compton scattering. And basically what it says is if an electromagnetic wave and 5G is microwave, it's electromagnetic. If it, when it hits an object, uh, the electrons can absorb that energy and radiate it back out again. That's Compton scattering. So I believe that the more charged we are, the more Compton scattering we have, the more ability we have to ab absorb this 5G and bounce it off. I think that um, electrons are the, the force field, if you would, uh, uh, the shielding that nature gives us. And uh, if you look in parts of the world now, they're cutting down all of these beautiful trees on these boulevards and streets for 5G. Well, part of it is because of line of sight, but I think the main thing is the trees are alive and they are attached to the earth and they're pulling the electrons out of the earth and creating this cloud of living electric goodness around them. And so when yes. the 5G hits that, it gets absorbed and radiated out harmlessly. And they say, all right, you know, we got to kill these trees. We got to get rid of these, not because necessarily that they're blocking it mechanically, they're blocking it electrically. Wow. So, yeah. Now you can't be attached to this, this machine 24 seven, but when you, 
you know, if, if you, it's my suspicion that uh, if we can knock out the crystals and then let the machine charge us up and we can hold the charge properly, then when we go out in the world and we get exposed, our shields are still up. Like if you have a cell phone, right? And the cell phone's new, it'll hold a charge for a while. But as that battery gets old, you know, you might have to keep charging it more and more often because it just won't hold the charge, right? So that's what happens for us. If we can decrystallize our body and get our body cells to hold a charge longer, then you go out in the world and yeah, you get hit by 5G or whatever, but you've got enough electrons on you and enough stored in you that it hits you, bounces off. Now it's not 100% protection, right? But I think that not only is it, would it protect the skin, but if every cell has a stronger charge, it too you know, has got that Compton effect, that ability to resist uh, the effect of 5G. Wow. This machine is fascinating. This whole concept is fascinating. I have a lot of questions. Should I, should I begin or do you have anything else? Uh, that, that's, um, that's it. I'm ready. So, all right. So let's, I get it because me and you have been talking about this machine for months. So I understand most of it to, to my best ability without uh, having studied too much physics or <laughs> Or electricity or, or electricity or electrical engineering. So in simplest terms, we have, can you go down to the simplest level? What is happening when we're standing on the earth barefoot and how your machine is replicating that in simplest sure. terms? Uh, okay, so the, the, the electrons come off the sun, they get into the earth, we stand on the earth. And because our head is higher than our feet, it creates a slight differential and we end up sucking electrons into us and it goes up and out and then that you know creates and what whole, is an electron uh it's this dimensionless tiny charge of energy that you know you, so if you have an atom you've got the, the protons uh and the neutrons and then and then you got the electrons and it has a cloud around them so it's the um, it's the motive force it's the driver like if you were to look inside the body and say well, what's actually making things happen that's it you know, at the end of the day, ATP, all of it, it's all being driven by this little charge. Like, you know, you could look at you, like you could look at your cell phone and say, wow, it's got all these apps. At the simplest thing, it needs a battery for all the apps to work. No battery, no apps. So, you know, trying to run the body without electrons is like trying to run the body without water. It, it's such a fundamental thing but it's an invisible thing like you can see water and so you know you need it but we can't see electrons so when it wasn't so obvious that we that they were there and we needed them but now that we have the equipment to measure we can be like oh my god this is a major player and you know all of these things in my body that weren't healing that you know i tried all of these protocols all of these machines all these supplements i put some electrons in boom that's it my body was like that was what i needed Thank you very much. I'll go, I'll take it from here. Wow. Do you think that deuterium and electrons have anything correlated? Because deuterium is heavy hydrogen, right? So that, would mm -hmm. that be H, is hydrogen positive or negative? So, you know, yeah. we've gone back and forth on whether or not heavy water is a good thing. Uh -huh. uh, some people, you know, say it's good. Some people say it's bad. The people that say it's good point to the people that drink the glacial runoff. But there's a lot of other things in that glacial runoff. Uh, that could be responsible. It's huge. It's got a lot of minerals in it. Uh, cause, correlations, not causation. So, um, and that's a whole other ball game, you know. Right. And we got, you know, uh, now we're looking at a different, a different set of things. I guess my, my the reason I bring it up is I'm wondering if if deuterium and uh, electrical charge both are a statement to like the the pollution and the condition of the planet, right? Because it's been said that deuterium has been increased in our water supply. Uh, in the past 50, 60 years. And you, you're saying that electricity has, and ions have gone down in our mm. water supply, in our air supply. I'm wondering if like both of those are some way of determining the state of our planet, or do you think that's too far of a conclusion? Uh, well, there's certainly um, things you can look at. The, uh -huh. the electrons going down are from, uh, in the air, it's due to um, atmospheric pollution and things like chemtrails. Uh, in the water, it's due to the water purification systems, the flocculation. Uh -huh. Uh, the deuterium is just, you know, anywhere you, anywhere you look, you can see 
um, the results of our short sighted scientific thinking. And, you know, we'll figure it out. You know, we're, we're, we're still new to technology as a species. We're still acting as if, you know, the earth has an infinite capacity to absorb all the toxins we've put out and, you know, we'll become good stewards. It's just going to take a little while. Mm. Okay. So, so these electrons are the, this electrical fuel that everything needs to run. Right. Mm. And how did you, in, in simple terms, how did you create a machine that can do the same thing that mother earth does? Sure. Yeah. So the machine is basically a pump, right? So when you plug it in, it's going to, all right. So if you put your feet on the ground, you get, you get to neutral. Now, even though there's a huge amount of electrons in the earth, they call the earth neutral just as a reference point, right? Just like zero degrees Fahrenheit isn't zero. It's a reference point. So the earth is considered neutral. It's considered zero, even though obviously there's a lot of electrons. Now, that's not enough to do the job once someone is crystallized. Once their batteries are shot, plugging it in is not going to fix the battery. You've got to do something special to that battery to break through the crystals so that then it can get charged again. So, What, what are the crystals? What's, what substance in, exactly are they? Oh, there's lots of crystals in the human body. The calcium, oxalates, all sorts of things crystallize. Um, what about in a battery? What's the actual substance? Uh, well, in a lead acid, it's, um, uh, sul it's um, lead sulfate. Lead in a lead acid battery. I, w okay. I don't know what it is in a lithium battery. Probably okay. lithium something. Eight. Okay. Interesting. Uh, okay, keep going. Uh, so the machine is basically a pump. It's attaching to the earth and to you. And it's pumping out the electrons at a massive level, up to 18,000 volts over what the earth would do. So it's saying, hey, earth, I know you've got electrons. And you, I'm going to take it, you know, I'm going to take a, a little extra. And it's going to pump them into you at an enormous level. So it's like a waterfall in a box, sort of, that kind of thing. Wow. And, and it, people have their feet on it or they have their hands on it? Well, you can put any part you want on. I did the feet initially because that's how we're designed. If you look from an acupuncture standpoint, um, kidney one is the place where we pull energy in from the earth. And so our electric irrigation system or the meridians are designed to put energy through the feet. That doesn't mean you can't place it in other places. I have, and with amazing effects. Um, but that's the, the place you'd start. I wonder how this will work with heavy metal detox because, you know, I always tell people to take binders because binders are negatively charged substances that grab onto affinitive metals, right? Mm. So, I, and, and even, you know, I used to tell people, there's an old saying that you run after a lightning storm, right? Cause the lightning ionizes the air and then the, the air cleans your lungs and it's the most effective to run after a lightning storm. So this is like the granddaddy of all negative ions, like of how to basically grab onto positively charged junk in the system. W would you agree? Well, you know, it's uh, interesting you'd say that because I started looking at um, using electricity to detox because the toxic metals are all positively charged and opposites attract. Now, back in the 1800s, uh, they were experimenting with electricity for detox. And uh, what they ended up doing was, they, there was a, one case where there was this um, uh, guy who was a metal worker and he had terrible ulcers on his hands. And the doctor or scientist uh, put electrons into a water tub and the guy put his hands in and you could see the gold and silver plating the electrodes as they left his hands. It pulled it out of him. They were also using this for a lot of people with lead poisoning because before welding came on, uh, people would uh, do plumbing with lead. So there was a lot of lead poisoning. And so they put people in bathtubs and charge it up negatively and the lead would get sucked out of them into, and into the water and into the electrodes. So, I absolutely think that you can, and I've done it, um, you can put your feet into a little, uh, a little foot tub and uh, put the electrodes in and it'll create highly negative water. And as your blood goes through your feet, the positively charged elect, um, toxic metals are going to get sucked right into the water. They're just, you know, right into it. Just make sure you toss the water, you know, don't put it in your garden or something. Just, you know, that water. It'll kill have. everything, right? Well, you know, it'll, it'll have metals in it for sure. Right. This is a random question, not so much to do 
with this machine, but do you think, cause you've been on this journey for probably 24, 25 more years than I have. Do you think that it's possible for us to get fully detoxified? No, no, no it's not no. right. Think of the, all right. So if the body were yeah. like, a, a, if you think of the body, like as a greasy dish, right? The toxins are the, you know, the, the grease, the toxins accumulate in the fat of the body. Because if it's water soluble, you pee it out. If it's fat soluble, it gets stuck in. So how do you get the grease off a dish? You put soap on and wash it off. So detoxifiers are soaps that will break down and, uh, the, the connections um, and attach to the toxins and out they go. But we're not a two-dimensional dish. We're more like this three-dimensional sponge next to it, right? Now, if you let that sponge get disgusting, and then you, and you say, I got to clean the sponge, and you hold it under the water and you squeeze it a few times, yeah, you'll see all sorts of stuff come out of the sponge. Now you keep squeezing, more comes out. You know, it, it's harder and harder to see it. It's still there. But that sponge will never be completely clean. Um, but you can get it functionally clean. You can get it clean to the point where, you know, um, it works for you. So will your body ever be completely detoxed? No, never. But if you can get, you know, 98, 99% of the toxins out, so that your body is like, hey, I've got it from here, you know, because the body has a capacity to get rid of toxins and or right. deal with toxins or sequester toxins. It's just when we overwhelm the body's ability that we have trouble. So you take it to the point where the body is like, okay, whew, I'm good. I can handle it from here. Th that's the goal. Right. At least for me. Right. So do you think, because I know you've dove deep you're even more fanatical than I am when it comes to machines and detox. So you've done ozone. You, you used to build rife machines. You um, you've done be you've used a beamer device. You've used other PEMF devices. You've used far infrared saunas. You've used the whole gamut of, of devices and pro and you've even built hyperbaric oxygen chambers, right? So all marketing aside for this amazing product that we will talk about at the end of this talk, do you think electrons is the most important piece of the puzzle from what you've gathered so far in your journey? You know, it's a very uh, individual thing, right? You get okay. someone with a brain injury, hyperbaric is the most important thing. You get someone with a, a very chronic uh, non-healing injury, then PEMF could be the most important thing. Um, but those are specialty things, right? Um, what I would say is the electrons... I, I think of them in terms of like food, water, exercise, sunshine, sleep. These are the fundamental things you have to have. So I don't think of it in terms of a supplement because it's not adding to us something that we wouldn't have normally. Like if I go out, like I'm never going to get hyperbaric under normal conditions. Right. But I should get electrons under normal conditions. I'm never going to get PEMF, but I need, a, so the electrons to me are a more fundamental thing than the other ones. Right. That doesn't mean that the other ones for an individual person might not be more specific, but for the average person, that this is a more fundamental thing that, that if it's not addressed, you know, I mean, how's the body supposed to use, if you use hyperbaric, it's going to trigger regeneration of the brain tissue, right? If you use PMF, it's going to, tr which is actually raising voltage in the cells. All of these things are going to eventually trigger the body to heal itself. At the end of the day, you've got to heal you. And all, like, like think of like a surgeon, right? Someone comes in with a, uh, a cut. What does a surgeon do? He stitches or glues the wound shut. But he doesn't go in there to every single cell in that wound and create scarring and bind it together and then degrade the scarring and then create tissue and move stem cells. He doesn't do that. He just approximates the wound or she approximates the wound and then the body does it, right? So at the end of the day, the body's got to do all the healing. And yes, all of these other technologies are great. I do PEMF daily. I love it. But it still requires you to have enough food in your body to make the new tissue, enough water in your body to carry the blood, enough electrons in your body to activate the enzymes and to power the machinery that's doing all the healing. So it's a very fundamental level that we have to address. And uh, modern society unwittingly through rubber shoes and electronics and all of it, we've been stripped of electrons so badly. 
it's amazing we can even function. Wow. For the right person, this could basically be like the first time they sat in the sun, <laughs> like the first time they saw the sun. You know, um, when I first started using it, I was addicted to it. I was on it for five hours a day. Two, I would do two and three hour stretches two and three times. I, I wouldn't get off of it because my body was, it, it, it was like trying to tear a, a man who'd walked through a desert for a week from a water fountain. I was just, I just couldn't get enough of it. And then finally it's like, oh, like a day would go by and I would forget to use it, but then I would use it the next day. It took me like six months before I got to the point where if I don't use it, it's no big deal. And so I had a lot of junk that had to, I had a lot of damage to the batteries that had to be cleared out. Now, uh, but the nice thing is, unlike a car battery, a human battery will repair itself if you just help it out a bit, right? It can't, it has a capacity. We have a capacity to remove crystals. But in most of us, we make crystals so much faster that we can get rid of them. And so if we can blast them out over the course of a few months, then you can hold a charge. Then you've got your antioxidants. Then the bugs aren't interested. The 5G partially can be reflected off. You know, you've got the, the, the whole thing going on with cells replicating at the right speed. Uh, the worms don't want to be there. Yeah, it's a huge player. Wow. That's awesome. I, I saw the initial, initial prototype. This was maybe six months ago and I used it for a short while and I could already feel some relaxation. Um, I'm super excited to try it again and, and dive deeper with it. Hopefully the machine will be ready in a few weeks, right? Or a month or so. Yeah. I think we're going to have them out in February of 2020. Fe February. Amazing. And I'm super stoked to use it. How do people dive deeper with, with learning about it or reading about it? Or you have information on your website? Uh, yeah, you know, I put two videos up and, you know, we get more into um, how it works to detox and the kind of crystals of form in the body and the, the science behind exactly what's going on with electrostatic charges. So for people that are interested, uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll put a link uh, down there. They can get to yeah. our videos and watch. Okay. Um, I also have a, a lot of cool B-roll footage from our last time that we were, we were hanging out. So maybe I would put some, a little B-roll footage, but if I do, everyone remember that that's the prototype, not the final version. Uh -huh. That was just as he was building it. Cause me and him have been talking about this machine for like almost a year now. Um, and, and, and I've been anticipating it more than anyone watching this video. That's for sure. So, um, so maybe I'll put up some of that B-roll footage and they can see, you know, and, and, and f that pulse, remember when, when you mm, filmed oh, that little fire. pulse thing, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of other things there, but, um, anyway, man, it's awesome having you on. If I wasn't in the car, I could keep talking for longer, but I got to get out and stretch and move my body. Um, and, uh, is there anything else you wanted to, to share? No, man. Good luck with your power. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Remedy Link is Spencer's web, uh, website. I'll put the info in the info description and in the comments, and you're going to see him again. We, we do videos pretty regularly. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks for coming on. Good to be with you. Talk to you later. Let me stop the recording here. Uh, stop. There we go.